Hey all, in this video we're going to be reviewing the plaster filter. The plaster filter sometimes works a, a lot like um, a cross between the notebook paper and the base relief. A lot of these filters are not uh, very different. It makes it hard to come up with some unique way for utilizing them. And um, here is my layout that I made. And I utilized uh, the plaster effect on this image in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and make invisible all this stuff. And here is what I did um, with one of the photos. It's actually uh, one of the photos, this one here, that I had um, in the small grouping of photos. And um, I also put a paper over it to blend it. I did a lot of stuff to get it to where I liked it. And this is more um, what I did with the plastic effect. Um, I applied actually two plastic effects. Uh, if you look in my layers palette here, I applied it with one foreground color here, and I used the overlay mode, and I applied it with another foreground color here, and I applied the pin light mode, and then I have my original photo here. And that's what I did to get this effect, and I blended uh, paper over on top of it for even a uh, cooler uh, effect. But let's go to the original photo and play with this just a little bit. There's not much to it. Um, when I think of plaster, I think of uh, plaster walls and um, plaster in art would be kind of covering something with that yucky, <laughs> sticky plastic not plasticky, uh, gooey white stuff in your hands and kind of covering something so it kind of takes on the shape of that something. Uh, that's what I think of, of, of plaster, like uh, a plaster statue um, where you've taken your fingers and kind of, uh, you know, made the eyes and the mouth and and uh, kind of more of a 3D look. Um, whether or not that Photoshop and Photoshop Elements achieves that effect or not, uh, I don't know, but th this is how I use to play with it. Now it does react to the foreground and the background color. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control J to duplicate this layer um, that I'm playing on. And I think, I don't remember what I did, I think I got a silver from the car, uh, the train car, when I did mine for the foreground color. And um, then you just go up to the filter, sketch, and plaster. And wait for it to come up. When I run my recording software, things are much slower. Ah, gone into a not responding mode. Here it comes, and it does uh, bring up the filter gallery and we have um, two sliders of course the this is where you want your light source maybe the I did top but top right would be consistent with a lot of the um, digital scrapbooking I had done the top but it doesn't matter we're playing again and you can see here what it has done to the image. You have the image balance and um, this slider controls how much the image is raised off the base. In other words, how far you dig your finger into that plastic. Not plastic, why do I keep saying that? Whatever they make plaster out of. So um, down here it it's uh, much smoother there's it loses a lot of the detail and up here you get uh, 
a loss of detail too because it goes in the other direction so the key is to move this around until you see what um, where it finds the best edges from the light and the dark see for me I didn't want this on the side so I went down some more and you have to find the the best for what you are looking at for see and that's too much I don't remember where I was at there I wanted a little bit of the inside I I'm not gonna spend a lot of time finding that perfect spot like I had before I wanted to see a little bit of the inside when I was doing it but mostly have the focus on the windows and so I'm just gonna call it good here now the smoothness it um, I'm not sure what it does let's go way down and there's what it looks dealt like very low and all the way up and it doesn't make a whole lot of change for my um, thing um, so I'm just gonna leave it kind of out here in the default area and then I'm gonna click OK and there I have my image and <coughs> of course as I said it does react to your foreground and background color let's take a look at that get another one and let's just uh, make this uh, this color blue for the foreground and I have a gray on the background and just run that filter again just so we can see what happens and you can see it has the blue for the um, the lighter areas because the foreground color appears to be grabbing actually if you look at the original it seems to be grabbing the darker areas and the background color seems to be grabbing the lighter areas and uh, filling in for that so you can utilize that knowledge um, uh, see let's see I'm just playing and as I play hopefully for you to learn um, let's say I want uh, the lighter areas to be the blue and the darker areas to be something outrageous like the red and uh, let's run it again just so you can see so you can purposefully utilize this filter for your use so you can see the lighter areas now the background color does the lighter areas are blue and the top the darker areas have turned red of course I don't want that so we're going to go at it again make it another copy get rid of this red one and um, I'm gonna grab two different silvers out of here and run it again because I kind of liked the silver effect before and so what I had done before was I had two run with two different colors and then I just began playing with the blending modes and wow you see that now just go pop doesn't look like palaster because I have used um, shades of gray but if you can imagine that in the uh, cream and a white it would might look more like plaster and if I turn on my original image so this one blends into it I can get some color back there we go that's pretty cool so lots of cool things if you mix this with uh, blending modes think about applying um, you know other filters to it, other um, textures. Um, just play until you get something really cool and then find a good way to use it uh, in your layout uh, and have fun with that. And so let's see, these two and this paper were my background. And then I use that same paper for a mat 
and I'm going to fill it all back in for you so you can see my layout. And I did the journaling at an angle to follow the train as well as the title. So there you go. Have fun. I look forward to seeing your creativity on this one.